Beyond the Bell, Bloomberg's comprehensive cross-platform coverage of the U.S. market close starts right now. About two minutes away from the end of the trading day, I'm Kaylee Lyons with Shanali Bostic, counting you down to the closing bell and here to help us take things to beyond the bell with a global simulcast. We're joined by Katie Greifeld and Scarlett Fu, bringing together our Bloomberg television, radio and YouTube audiences worldwide to parse through the most crucial moments of the trading day. And what a trading day it has been. We're just off of session lows, but still could be the fourth down day we're looking at here for U.S. stocks, Katie. We are off of session lows. The S&P 500 is down as much as 1.4% earlier. We've seen a little bit of a bid uh, just in the last couple of minutes or so. Kelly, I know usually, hopefully, you're not paying attention at 4 p.m. since I believe <laughs> usually you're Guilty. on at 5 a.m., but <laughs> things can get pretty funky in the last half hour trading, and maybe we're seeing a little bit of that, Scarlett. I think what's actually happening, and we're going to see this for a while to come, is the repricing of growth. And we're talking to Dryden Pence, the CIO at Pence Wealth Management, and he says this can take several months months. We'll see a bumpy first quarter, but right now you're also getting uh, some tax loss harvesting and some loss minimalization. So there's a lot of moving parts with people waiting for a Santa Claus rally. And as they do that, they're looking to close out their portfolios or at least make it look not as bad or perhaps take advantage of some losses to reduce their overall tax bill. Oh, so exciting to talk about taxes, Scarlett, <laughs> but really, uh, while we talk about the end of the day as well, you know, it, it really has been about a, another very exciting story here, here, yields, yields, and more yields. Uh, you have to wonder when the stuff that's happening in Washington will also start to add on to the tightness that the monetary conditions have been adding on as well. Well, Sonali, as you say, it's all about yields, and that is why we have seen the NASDAQ, those tech-heavy high multiple stocks, underperforming on the day. As we hear those closing bells ring, that index down by about one and a half percent. Not the steepest losses we had seen in the session, but steep nonetheless, especially so compared to the Dow, which is down only about half of one percent. The broader S&P 500 down about nine-tenths of one percent, 318.17, where we close today, Creedy. Katie. Pretty oh my broad. Goodness. You know, I get K that names. all Kaylee, the time. Uh, I've been called worse, Katie. but in any case, it is a pretty broad-based <laughs> sell-off. You have 392 names in the S&P 500 lower, just 109 names in the green. So, again, uh, not too pretty out there on the S&P 500, at least. Yeah, no kidding. Take a look at all of this red on the screen. You have consumer, media, retailing, semis all down more than 2% on the day. You have a little bit of green, guys. I will point out the green because those banks, they're up a whole three-tenths of 1% on the day. We've been talking about that yield story, but food and beverage and energy are also seeing a little bit of a boost on the day, but again, mostly here in the red. Let's hope tomorrow's a better day. Well, it was energy and it was banks. You can see that on the single stock level as well. I did find some gainers. We have energy, energy up there. Again, energy, one of the best performers today. Uh, looking for a little bit of a fundamental story here. There is a headline on the terminal that insiders at this company bought more than $1.47 million worth of shares. Maybe that's helping give a little bit of a bit in addition to some higher commodity prices as well. Moving down, we have Wells Fargo. Actually, this was the second best performer in the S&P 500 after NRG Energy. Uh, we did have, you know, yield curves a little bit steeper today, still very deeply inverted. This was the outperformer among the big banks up about one and a half percent. Wells Fargo only down 13 percent this year. So big outperformer relative to the S&P 500, even with those losses. And I did want to end on uh, a little bit of an outperformer, you could say. This is magical. Uh, it had its late stage clinical study of a therapy for liver disease meet its main goals that earned an upgrade at Raymond James. And you can see the stock just absolutely skyrocketed up 268 percent, Scarlett. Yeah, the lottery ticket for whoever might have been invested in that one. It was an embarrassment of riches in terms of looking for decliners. Yeah. I'm going to start big with Amazon because Evercore cut its price target to $150 on signs of cloud softness, which is unusual given that Amazon Web Services has been such a source of strength for the company. Disney was the biggest decliner in the Dow to make a new five-week low. The opening weekend of the Avatar sequel uh, came in way below box office estimates. And we're going to end with an ETF, XH which tracks the home builders along with companies that support the industry. Home builder sentiment uh, came in and it, it extended its record decline to 12 months. It's now at its lowest since June 2012, if you exclude uh, the really funky period right after COVID began. Of course, uh, Kelly, we get November housing starts and building permits tomorrow, which uh, may just kind of uh, reinforce the bad news in uh, the home building market right now. 
Yeah, housing really where you're seeing the softness come through as the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates aggressively this year. And of course, the anticipation that they have more to do is what really is leading a sell off in bonds today. Everything related to the equity story honestly comes back to the bond market story because that is what drove so much of the action. The 10 year yield up 10 basis points on the day 358 where it trades at the moment. That is about 67 basis points below that of the two year Treasury yield, which rose eight basis points today to 425. So still a very very deeply inverted yield curve, even if we aren't at the depths of inversion we were earlier this month. But what that inverted curve, Katie, is signaling is real concern out there about growth, about the idea that the Fed is going to tighten too much, choke off the U.S. economy. And as a result, there's going to be a lot more pain to come for assets across the board. Yeah, the magnitude of this inversion you really can't ignore. Interesting to see a bit of a bear steepening today on the yield curve, especially a lot of that selling coming in the 10 year Treasury yield specifically. But still, we're below 3.6%. You think about where we were just a few months ago, about 4.3%. We've still seen a pretty big bond rally here over the last few months. And that's why people like the bond market. That's why they say there is an alternative in the market now, whereas for so long in the zero interest rate environment, no one wanted to be in bonds um, because you needed yield. Now you can look at it and actually get something good. Still, within equities, you're looking at, I, I feel like crowded trades. We go over this all the time. Who are the best performers? You've got staples, you've got energy, you've got financials, because these are the companies that have a chance to eke out margins or maintain their margins in a recessionary environment. We don't know whether it's going to be a long recession, a short recession, a, a deep recession, but if you had to pick, you're going to go with what you think is going to be safe. Okay, I'm going to give you a hot take here on crowded <laughs> trades for a second, because normally we think crowded trades too crowded. Maybe those are the ones to watch. But with how well trend followers have done this year, you have to wonder whether you like to follow the crowd. The trends have been getting, if you listen to Cliff Asness, more extreme on one end or another. And there is some banking research out there today that says that might continue into next year. All right, hot take from Shanali Boss. I don't know if I have a hot take that can follow that, but maybe uh, something that is going to be hot this week, Katie. I'm looking for anything because I thought the week ended, or the year ended really last week when we got all of those central bank decisions. I thought we could all pack up and go home. Obviously, the four of us are still here. You have to there stay is, with me. I do have to hang out with Shanali. This is true. But there are some things we are going to be here talking about this week. A lot of economic data rolling out over the course of the next couple of days, and we know the Federal Reserve is going to have an eye on that. We do have PCE. That seems to be the headline at least for me that's on Friday that's what I'm most excited before since I'm off all next week so when we finally get uh, those numbers humble brag. I can go home but we also have earnings too. Nike for example FedEx uh, earnings season never ends uh, not even in the second to last week of December and of course that'll be an important read on the health of the consumer at this moment yeah Big, big questions about how much Nike may need to cut prices, uh, promotional activity, just to get the sales numbers up, but at the cost to profit margins, especially when you think about uh, the strong dollar as well, since Nike is a global brand and uh, certainly relies on those Asia Pacific and European markets. Yeah, we talk so much about yields. We have to talk about that strong dollar and whether that trade actually starts to come off in a bigger way come into next year and what would drive that for us forward. Yeah, have we seen the peak already, peak dollar? peak yields, peak hawkishness of the Federal Reserve. It seems we always come back to these questions, Scarlett. Time and again, we realize that we had not actually seen the peak, but maybe it's in now. And I say that with giant question mark attached <laughs> to the end. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. BlackRock, for instance, is betting that um, these uh, estimates of peak inflation are just flat out wrong. Inflation mm. may be slowing, but it's not going away anytime soon and certainly not coming anywhere close to the Fed's 2% target. So you have to perhaps readjust uh, your expectations and not look for things to go back to the way it was anytime soon. I got to say, so much of the inflation conversation depends, though, on what commodities are doing, what yeah. oil is doing. And I want to point out that for the second year in a row, energy is just absolutely crushing up crushing it. That sector is up 52%. It is the only sector higher this year, and it was the outperformer last year, too. So you talk about a crowded trade. You have to wonder how much juice is left in energy. And people love it, though. They yeah. still yeah. they still have it as one of their best performing sectors in the year to come. I mean, all the different notes that we've gotten on the 2023 outlook, highest yielding sector still provides a lot of value, even with all those uh, superlatives you just gave us. Yeah, and I wonder how much China is the reason why, because in theory, that's going to drive a lot of demand, continued demand 
than the commodity complex and keep pushing up those profits for energy companies higher, Chanel. I'm going to be so boring, though. I know that the energy story is a huge story, especially cold when take. It, cold take coming. Cold, cold take. take. <laughs> it is cold. It's appropriate for the season. But, you know, the, the housing market, we have to keep on watching. We have to keep watching closely. And tomorrow it starts as a good start. <laughs> good start. <laughs> All right, it's housing, it's energy. We have a lot to keep an eye on in addition to the economic data, to the earnings. We're going to do that all week, but we have to say goodbye for now. That does it for Beyond the Bell. It's our cross-platform coverage of the market's close on Bloomberg Television and Radio and YouTube, also now streaming on Bloomberg Quick Take. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place.